Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage, day two here at VMware Explore. It's our 12th year covering VMware's annual conference, formerly called VMworld, now it's VMware Explore, exploring new frontiers, multi-cloud, and also bearing some of the fruit from all the investments in cloud native, Tanzu and others. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We have the man who's in charge of a lot of that business, a lot of stuff coming out of the oven, hitting the market, AJ Patel, Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Modern Applications and Management Group at VMware. Basically, the modern apps. Absolutely. That's the Tanzu, all the good stuff. And well, ARIA now. And, and ARIA, the management platform, which has got social graph and all kinds of graph databases. Welcome back. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Great to see, see you in person. It's been since 2019 when you're on. So, a lot's happened since 2019 in your area. Again, things get, get the way VMware does it, as you, we all know, you announce something and then you build it and then you ship it, and then you announce it. <laughs> and so, extreme, but okay. so <laughs> you guys had announced a lot of cool stuff. You bought Heptio, we saw that Kubernetes investment and all the cloud native mm -hmm. goodness around it. Bearing fruit now, what's the status? Give us the update on the modern applications of the management. Obviously the area is a big announcement here on the management side, but in general, holistically, what's the update? I think the first update is just the speed and momentum that containers and Kubernetes are getting in the marketplace. So if you take the market context, you know, over 70% of organizations now have Kubernetes in production. Not one or two clusters, but hundreds of clusters, sometimes tens of clusters. So, to me, that is a market opportunity that's coming to fruition. You know, sometimes people will come and say, AJ, aren't you late to the market? I say, no, I'm just perfectly timing it. Because where does our value come in? It's enterprise readiness. We're the company that people look to when you have complexity, you have scale, you need performance, you need security, you need the robustness, and so, Tanzu is really about making modern applications real. Helping you design, develop, build, and run these applications. And with Aria, we're fundamentally changing the game around multi-cloud management. So the one-two punch of Tanzu and Aria is I'm most excited about. And isn't it true that most of the Kubernetes you know, today is people pulling down open source and banging away, and now, and now they're looking for, you know, like you say, more robust uh, management capability. You know, last two years when I would go to many of the largest customers, they're like, you know, we, we're doing good. We've got a DYI platform. We're building this. Yeah. And then you go to the customer a year later, he's got not 30, 40 teams, and he has Log4j happen. <laughs> and all of a sudden he's like, oh, I don't want to be in the business of yeah. patching this thing or updating it, and yeah. you know, when's the next shoe going to fall? So that maturity curve is what I was talking yeah, about. Free like a puppy. Yeah. Yeah. AJ, yeah. You, know, you mentioned readiness, enterprise readiness, and the timing's perfect, you kind of alluded, not your exact words, but I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. That's a lot to do with what's going on. I mean, I'll say cloud native, AWS, think a hyperscale partner, big partner, and Google. And even Google said it today, you know, the world's spinning in their direction, especially with respect to VMware. Um, you get the relationship with the hyperscalers. Cloud's been on everyone's agenda for a long time, so mm -hmm. it's always been ready. But enterprise, your customer base at VMware, very cloud savvy in the sense they know it's there, there's some dabbling, there's some endeavors in the cloud, no problem. But from a business perspective, and truly transforming the VMware value proposition is a ready, they're ready, it's a ready time now for them. They're, they're, you can see the, the movement. Right. And so can you explain the timing of that? I mean, I get enterprise readiness, so we're ready to, to yeah. scale, all that good stuff. But the, the timing of yeah. product market fit is important here. I think, you know, when, when Raghu talks about that cloud first to cloud chaos, to cloud smart, that's the transition we're seeing. And what I mean by that is, they're hitting that inflection point where it's not just about a single team. One of the guys basically I talked to, the CIO, he was like, look, let's assume hypothetically I have 1,000 developers. 100 have, can talk about microservices, maybe 50 has built a microservice, and three are really good at it. <laughs> so how do I get yeah. my 1,000 developers productive? Yeah. Right? On the other CIO says, this team comes to me and says, I should be able to develop directly to the public cloud. And he goes, absolutely you can do that. You don't have to come through IT. But here's the book of security and compliance that you need to enforce to get that thing in production. Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> so that reality of how do I scale my developers is turning into a developer experience problem. We now have titles which says head of developer experience. Imagine that two years ago. Yeah. We didn't talk about it. People said, hey, I got containers, Kubernetes, I'm good to go. Well, I can then, go get all the open source technology you talked yeah, about, yeah, yeah. and now they're saying no. Well, and, and also software here. supply chains, another word exactly. that you're seeing. This is a symptom of the growth of op I mean, open, open source, source is the software industry. That is that, is, that is, I don't think, debatable. Right. Okay, that's cool. But now integration becomes vetting, trust, trust and code. It's, it's very interesting software time right now. That's and, right. and how is that impacting the cloud native momentum in your mind? 
accelerating it? What inning are we in? How would you peg the progress? You know, uh, on the scale of one to 10, I think we're halfway mark now. Yeah. And that moved pretty quickly, right? And, it really did. And you know, if you sit back mm -hmm. today, the kinds of applications we're involved in, I have a Chicago wealth management company. We're building the next generation wealth management application. It's a fundamental refactoring of the legacy application. If you go to a prescription company, they're building a brand new prescription platform. These are not just trivial. What they're learning is the lift and shift doesn't work for these major applications. Yeah. They're the, having to refactor them. That's which exactly is the modernization. So how specifically are they doing yeah. Are they putting some kind of abstraction layer on that? Or are they actually gutting it and rewriting it? And There's always going to be brownfields. Like, remember the old, the old days of SOA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. are putting APIs in front of their main systems. They're not re rewriting the core banking or the core platform. But the user experience, the business logic, the AI ML capability to bring intelligence into the platform. It's the surrounding the capability to make it much more intuitive, much more usable, much more declarative. That's where things are going. And so I'm seeing this mix of integration all over again. You know, it's showing my age now. <laughs> but you know, the new AI SOA is now microservices and <laughs> messaging and events. But the same patterns. Uh, but again, being much more accelerated with cloud native services. But, and, and it is to the point, it's, it's accelerated today. They're not having to you know, freeze the code for That's six right. months or nine months, and that, which would kill the whole yes. you know, the, the, the recipe for failure. Right? So they're able to now to, to fast track That's their modernization. They have to prioritize because yep. they got limited resources, but how, how are you but guys But the practice is changing as well, right? What the old days it was 12, 18 month cycle yeah. releasing software. Yeah. If you heard the CVS CIO, Rohan, yeah. three months where they started to engage with us in getting an app in production, right? If you look at the COVID, 10 days to get a, a kind of a, a new uh, application for getting uh, small loans going with Pfizer, right? These are dramatically short term, but it's not rewriting the entire app. It's right. just putting these newer experiences, newer capability in front with newer modern developer practices. And they're saying, I need to do it not just once, but for 100, 200, 5,000, members of my team. JPMC has 50,000 developers. 50, yeah. You know, we just have thousands anymore. of apps. Exactly. Right? AJ, I want to get your thoughts on something that we've been talking about on our SuperCloud event. I know we had an event a couple weeks ago with you guys, one of our sponsors, VMware was, called SuperCloud, where we're defining that this next gen environment's a super cloud and every company will have a super cloud capability. Um, you guys, and underneath that is cross cloud capability. So right. super cloud's like a super set on top of um, a multi-cloud. Um, and a little word play or play on words is ecosystem partners versus partners in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Because if you're coming down to the integration side of things, it's about knowing what goes what. It's almost like building an OS if you're mm -hmm. a coder, right? Or, or an operating systems person. You got to put the pieces together right. Mm -hmm. Not just go to the directory and saying, okay, who's got the yeah. cheapest price in, yeah. in DR or, or you know, air gapping or something or some solution. So ecosystem partners are truly partners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> partners in the ecosystem are a bunch of people in a, in a, in a, in a, out on, out on, a on a list. Mm -hmm. How do you see that? Because the trend we're seeing is the development process includes partners at day one. That's right. Not bolt on. Completely agree. Share your thoughts on that. So let's look at that. The first thing I'm hearing from my customers is they're trying to use all the public clouds as a new IaaS. That's the first API or contract. Infrastructure as code, IaaS. Is. From then on, they're saying, I want more and more portable services. And if you see the success of some of the data vendors and the messaging vendors, you're starting to see best of breed becoming part of the platform. So you have to identify which of these are truly you know, getting market momentum and are becoming kind of de facto mm -hmm. leaders. Yeah. So Kafka goes hand in hand with streaming. RabbitMQ from my portfolio goes with messaging. Postgres for database. So these are kind of the, in your definition, ecosystem yeah. partners are foundational. In the security space, you know, it's Sneak is a, a common player yeah. in terms of scanning. Or Aqua and Prisma, even though we have Carbon Black. Those become partners of the, from, the, from a container security perspective. So what's happening is the industry stabilizing a handful of critical players that are becoming multi-cloud preference of choice in this environment. And our job is to bring it all together in a all coordinated, orchestrated manner to give them a platform. I mean, right? you guys always had ecosystem, but I think that priority more than ever, it wasn't really your job at VMware even say, 10 years ago to say, hey, this is the strategic role that you might play one partner. It was pretty much the partners all kind of fed off the momentum of VMware, yeah. virtualization. Right. And there's not a lot of nuance there. There's pretty much, they plug in and you're good. 
So what we're doing here is, since we're not the center of the universe, unfortunately, <laughs> for the application world, things like Backstage is a developer portal from Spotify that became open source. That's becoming the place where everyone wants to provide a plugin. And so we took Backstage and we said, let's provide enterprise support for Backstage. Right? If you take a technology like you know, what we have with Spring, every Java developer uses Spring. How do we make it modern with Spring Cloud? We work with Microsoft to launch a service with Azure Spring Enterprise uh, for Spring. So you're starting to see us taking communities where they have momentum and bringing the ecosystem around those technologies. Cluster API for Kubernetes, for how you manage stuff. Yeah. So it's about standards. Because the developers are voting with their clicks and their code exactly. repos. And so you're identifying the patterns that they like. That's right. And aligning with them and connecting with them rather than trying to sell against it. Exactly, it's the and story with everyone. I say stop competing. So people used to think Tanzu is Kubernetes. It's really Tanzu is the app, modern application platform that runs on any Kubernetes. So I've changed the narrative. When HefQ was here, we were trying to be a Kubernetes player. I'm like, Kubernetes is just another dial tone. You can use mine, you can use OpenShift. So this week we announced support for OpenShift, mm -hmm. for my Tanzu application platform. The value is moving up. It's around outcomes. So yeah. industry standards, yeah. taking lead, and solving problems. Yeah, we had a problem. panel at SuperCloud, Dave. You, I know you got a question, I'll get to you in a second, but the panel was the innovator's dilemma. And then during the, uh, the, uh, the event, one of the panelists, Chris Hoff, knows VMware very well, Beaker on Twitter, said it should be called the integrator's dilemma. <laughs> because the innovation's here, yeah. but the, inter put it all the integration of the, putting the piece parts together, building the thing, right. is the you know, innovation. And, and we come back and say, it's a secure software supply chain. It starts with great content. Did you know I publish most of the open source content on every hyperscaler through my Bitnami acquisition? So I start with great content that's curated. Mm -hmm. Then I allow you to create your own golden images. Yeah. Then I have a build service that secures, and so on and so forth. Then we bring it apart. So that opinionated solution, but batteries included, but you can change it, has been one of our key differentiators. We mm -hmm. recognize the roles is going to be modular. Come back and solve for it. Right? So I want to understand the sort of relationship, Tanzu and Aria, John was talking about you know, SuperCloud before we had our event. Uh, we had an earlier session where we helped people understand that that, that Aria was not, you know, V-realized, re Sorry, rebranded. Okay? <laughs> and, and the reason I bring that up is because we had said around SuperCloud that one of the defining characteristics was, sorry, SuperPaz, yeah. which, is, which is a specific purpose-built PaaS layer designed to support your objective for multi-cloud. And, and in speaking to a lot of people this week, there's a federated architecture, there's graph relationships, there's real-time right. ability to ingest and analyze. That's unique, and that's IP that is purpose built for what you're doing. Absolutely, so and I think what came out of all the learning is after you know, 20 years of uh, Pivotal and, and BA, and uh, what we learned that you still need some abstraction layer. Kubernetes is low, too low level. So what are the developer problems? What are the delivery problems? What are the operations and management problems? Aria solves all the operations and management problems. Tanzu solves the super pass problems yes, right. of providing a consistent right. way to build great software and the secure software supply yeah. chain to run on any infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So the combination of Tanzu and Aria complete the value chain. And, and it's different, you know, right? Again, we get a lot of heat for this, but we're saying, look, we're trying to describe that it's, good it's not just IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS of last decade. It's There's not. something new that's happening, and we, we chose the name SuperCloud. Yeah. And what's the difference? It's modular, it's yeah. pluggable. Yeah. It and fits into the way you operate. And it's running Versus the- PaaS was very prescriptive. Yes. If you, didn't, you couldn't fit, you couldn't jump down to the next level. This is very much, you can stay at the abstraction level or go lower level. Oh, we got to add that uh, to, the, to the attributes. Yeah, we're going to get, we're, thank we're, you. We're, we're recruiting him right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you we'll give you credit. I mean, it's funny, all the web services background, look at an app server, you well, you know about yeah. app servers. Basically, the company is an app. It is now, an app. So if you, if you believe that, say, Capital One is an application as a company, yes. and Amazon's providing all the CapEx. That's it. Okay, and they run all their, quote, old IT spend, millions, billions of dollars on operating expenses, that's going to translate to the top line called the income statement. So Dave always says, oh, it's on the balance sheet, but now they're going to go to the top line. So we're seeing dynamic, AJ, I want to get your reaction to this, where the business model shift, if everything's tech enabled, mm -hmm. the company is like an app server. Correct. So therefore, the revenue that's generated from the technology making the app work has to get recognized in the income. Okay, but Amazon's doing all all eight of, or the cloud hyperscale is doing all the heavy lifting on the CapEx. So technically it's the cloud on top of a cloud. Yes and no, That's the way, the way, the way I, I call that I call that a super cloud, Dave. So I like the idea of super cloud, but I think we're mixing two different constructs. 
One is the cloud is the new hardware, right? In terms of dynamic, elastic, always available, et cetera. And I believe, one of the customer I talk about, there's a service catalog of infrastructure services that's emerging. This super cloud is the next set of PaaS, super PaaS yes. services, yep. and the management services to use the cloud. We spend so much time as VMware building clouds. The problem is how do you effectively use the cloud? Mm -hmm. What problems do we solve around digital? where every company is a digital company, and the product is this application, as you said. Yeah. So everything starts with an application, and you look at it from the lens of how do you run the application, what it costs the application, what impact yeah. it's driving, and I think that's the change. So and I agree with you in some way, that is yeah, a digital strategy. That's, and that's the company, they're that's the, the company. The they're application the is the company. <laughs> uh, that's a t-shirt. And, API, make... and <laughs> API is the, is, is the so, currency. So AJ, you're, first of all, we'd love having you on theCUBE because you're like a master class in multiple <laughs> dimensions. So I want to get your thoughts on this abstraction layer because we were also talking earlier on theCUBE here uh, as well as before, but abstraction layers happen when you have major movements in markets that are game changing or major inflection points because you reach a complexity point where it's working so great, this yeah. new thing, that it's too complex to rein it in. And we were quoting Andy Grove by saying, let chaos reign, then reign in the chaos. So all major industry moments, go back 30, 40 years, happen with abstractions. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is that you can't be a vendor We've observed, you can't be a vendor and be the abstraction. Mm -hmm. Like, if Cisco's running routers, they right. can't be the abstraction right. layer. Right. They have to be the benefit of the abstraction yep. layer. Yep. And if you're on the other side of the abstraction layer, you can't be running I, that I like either. the way you're thinking about it, yeah. Do so, you agree? I completely agree, and, and you know, I'm an old middleware guy, and when I used to say this to my CEO, he's like, no, this is not middleware. I said, it's just a new middleware. <laughs> and what's middleware, right? It's a thing between app and infrastructure. You can define it whatever we want, right? And so this is the new distributed middleware. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's, yeah, it's and a metaphor and it's a good one because it does a purpose. It's a purpose. It creates a separation, but then you have, it's like a DMZ zone or whatever you want to call it. It's an area that things happen. But the difference from last time was, you could always deploy it to a thing. The thing is now the cloud. Yeah. The thing is a set of services. So now it's as much of a networking problem at the application layer, mm -hmm. is as much a security problem, it's how you build software, how you design. So APIs become part of your development. You can't think about APIs after the fact, right? When you build an API, you got to publish the API. Because the minute you publish it, if you change it, the API is out of, so you can't have it as a documentation process. So the way you build software, you use software, consume, is all about it. So to me, digital product with an API as a currency is where we're headed to. Yeah, that's a great observation. We're going to, we're going to make a mental note of that and make that a clip. Well, I want to get your thoughts on software development. You mentioned that, mm -hmm. you know, obviously software development, life cycles are changing, obviously open source is now. I mean, it's unlimited code, supply chain issues, what's in the code, I get that, verified code's going to happen. Is software development coding as much, or is coding changing the notion of like writing code? Because, or is it more glue layers you're writing? Uh, or like you're, I think you're, you're onto something. I call software development's composition now. You know, my son's at Facebook or Google. They have so many libraries. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't no longer start with the very similar primitives. You start with building blocks, components, services, libraries, open source technology. What are you really doing? You're composing these things from multiple artifacts. And how do you make sure those artifacts are good artifacts? So someone's not sticking in security, <laughs> you know, vulnerability into it. So the world is moving towards composition. Yeah. And there are a few experts who build the core components. Yeah. Most of the time we're just using those right. to build solutions. Yeah. And so our, the art here is how do you provide that set of best practices? We call them patterns, or yeah. building blocks, or services that you can compose. Yeah. So you can build these next generation. It's interesting, you know, it's interesting. It's, yeah. you, cooking meals. I mean, first cooking of all, you, you, I, 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 I agree with you 100% <laughs> what you're thinking. I agree with, and with that, that, that world view. Here's the, a dilemma that I'm seeing. You have, in the security world, you've got zero trust, you know, which is, I don't know you, I don't trust you at all. Mm. And if you're going to go down this compose, where you're going to have an orchestra of players mm -hmm. with instruments, so to speak, Dave, metaphor, that's trust involved. Yes. So you have two spectrums of issues. Yes. If software's going trust, and you're seeing Docker containers getting more verifications, mm -hmm. software supply chain, and then you got hardware, I call network, you guys, love zero trust. Mm -hmm. Where's the balance? How do you reconcile so, that? Is it just decoupled, nuanced? I mean, what's the point? No, no, I think it all comes together. Uh, and I, and I, what I mean by that is, so it starts with left shifting it all the way to handle developers. Right? So what, are you starting with good content? Do you have provenance of the stuff you're using? Are you building it correctly? So you're not introducing bad things like SolarWinds along the process. Mm -hmm. Are you testing it along the way of the development process? 
and then once in production, do you know, half the time it's configurations of where you're running the stuff versus the software itself. So you can think of the two coming together. Yeah. And the network security is protecting people from going laterally once they've got in there. So a whole security solution requires all of the above. A secure software supply chain, the ability to kind of monitor and look at configuration, we call posture management or workload management, and the network security of SASE for zero trust. That's a hardening, and the boundary is the application. All right, so is it an earned trust model sort of over time? No, it's Does designed it in, it's okay. built in. Right? Okay, so, uh, so it's not a because not, it's not linear. We can bolt in afterwards. Yeah. Because the developers them. are driving it, they got to know what they're doing. And it's changing every week. Yeah. If I'm putting a new code out every week, you can't, you can't be changing. Well, you guys me. got guardrails. Yeah, yeah. The guardrails concept is a good it example. It stops on the configuration side, but yeah. I also need the, the software. So Tanzu is about, the secure chain is about the development side of the house. Yeah. Guardrails are on the operational side of the yeah. house. You got to make sure the developers together. don't stop. That's right. They want to keep them. Things will going. always get out there, and sure. I find out there's a CV that I use a library I found after the fact. Okay, so, so, so again, while well, I got, got you here again, this is great, I want to get, right. test this thesis. So we've been saying on theCUBE, talking about the new ops, the new kind of ops that are emerging. DevOps, which we believe is cloud native, so DevOps movement, infrastructure as code, that's happened, it's all good, open source is growing, DevOps is done deal, it's done deal. Developers are doing that. That ops was IT. Mm -hmm. I don't need a server, it clouds my hardware, yep. check. That, that, that balances. The new ops is data and security, which has to match up to the velocity yep. of the developers. Do you believe that? Company, that's why we call it DevSecOps, and the sec is where all the action is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so data, and, and data, data too. And data is about making the data available where the app meets. So persist, the problem was, was you know, we had to move the logic to where the data is. Or you're going to move the data where the logic is. So data fabrics are going to become more and more interesting. I'll give you a simple example. I, I publish content today in a service catalog. Mm -hmm. My customer is saying, but my content catalog needs to be in 300 locations. How do I get the content in each of the repos that are running in 300 locations? So I have a content distribution problem. So you call it a data problem? Yes, it's about <laughs> getting the right data. Well, it's simple as even content, images available for use for deployment. Demand. So you think, when I think about the, the, the application development stack and the, and the analytics stack, right. the data stack if I can call it that, they're separate, mm -hmm. right? Are those worlds, I mean, people say I want to inject data and, a, and, and, and AI intelligence into apps, those worlds have I, to come I think together, about the they? insight from the historical being projected in the operational versus they're coming together. I have, to, a, right? I have a green plum platform, it's a great analytics platform. I have a transactional platform, do my customers buy the same? No, they're different buyers, they're different yeah. users. But the insight from that is being now plugged in so that at real time I can ask the question. Yeah. So even this information is being made available on demand. So yeah. that's where I see it. I don't and see that's the walls coming together, but the insight is being incorporated in the operational use. So I can say, do I give the risk score? Do I give you credit? It's based on a whole bunch of historical analytics done. Mm. At the real time, processing is happening, but the intelligence It's involved. a mind shift for sure, because the old model was, I have a database, we're good. Now you have time series database, That's you got graphs. Each one has a role, role to play. in the overall construct of the, of the new thing. Right, but it's about at the end, how do I make use of it? Yeah. Someone built a smart AI model, I don't know how it was built, but I want to apply it for that particular purpose. Okay, so the final question for you, at least from my standpoint is, here at VMware Explore, <laughs> okay, you have a lot of the customers and some new people coming in right. that, that we've heard about. What's their core order of operations right now. Get on the bandwagon for modern apps. How do you see their world unfolding as they go back to the ranch, their places, and go back to their boss? Okay, we got the modern application, we're on the right track, boss, full steam ahead, or what change do they make? I think the biggest thing I saw was with some of the branding change as well and some of the new offerings. The same leader had two teams, the VMware team and the public cloud team. And they're saying, hey, maybe VMware is going to be the answer for both, and that's the world of models. That's the biggest change I'm seeing. They were only thinking of us on the left column. Now they see us as a unifying player to play across cloud native and VMware. They're uniquely set up to bring it all together. That's been really exciting mm -hmm. this week. All right, AJ, great to have you on. As always, great thank perspective. you, sir. Yeah. Great hand, worth, worthy, uh, worthy of great stuff. Congratulations on the success of the, all that investment coming to bear. Thank you. And on the new management platform. Yeah, thank Aria. you, and thanks always for giving us all the support you need. Uh, we it's love always it. always great. Yeah. All right, Cube awesome. coverage here. Getting all the data, getting inside the heads, getting, it, getting all the specifics and all the new trends, and actually connecting the dots here on theCUBE. I'm Sean Furrier with Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more coverage from day two. Two sets, three days, CUBE at VMware Explorer. We'll be right back. Thank you.